Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me begin by thanking the organizers for the invitation to speak and to be part of this conference in honor of Luc et Luzi. Um, like so many people, uh, Luc's work lies at the foundation of much of my own work, including the work I'm talking about today. Um, and his generosity with ideas and encouragement has been tremendously important for me. Um, I'm really delighted and honored to take part in this event. Um, let me also apologize in advance. I'm still struggling with the slides, so I'm gonna do my best to give the closest thing to a blackboard talk that I can and uh, handwrite um, the talk. Uh, please let me know if my handwriting is hard to read um, um, and I'll try to do better. Okay, so um, I'm talking about representability results uh, for flat cohomology. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Dan Bragg, uh, who is here at Berkeley. Um, let me begin uh, with some motivation. Um, and the main results. Is the writing showing up okay? Yeah, okay. Um, so let's consider a proper uh, smooth morphism. Um, let's say geometrically connected fibers. Um, so what Dan and I uh, wanted to started out trying to understand um, was various properties of the derived push forward even, well, we started with mu p. Um, so here I'm talking about FPPF cohomology. So I'm using the FPPF topology. Um, and in particular, we were interested in representability results uh, for these sheaves. So these are sheaves on the big flat side and you can ask whether they're schemes or algebraic spaces. Um, and then do a, things from there. So, well, let me do some easy cases. So if I is zero, um, because of my assumptions on, on the morphism, uh, R zero F lower star mu P is just mu P on the base. So that's good. Um, if I is one, Already there, it gets somewhat interesting. Uh, you use the Kummer sequence. Zero here. So this is multiplication by P. Um, and you see that uh, R1 F lower star mu P um, is the kernel a multiplication by P on the re relative Picard scheme um, which again is a nice well at least it's a group scheme um, and so um, it's representable also in that case um, so sort of the first question we thought about was uh, what about yeah, sorry, we have a small. So, so the Picard scheme is a group algebraic space in general. Yeah, so I guess when I say representable, I will usually think about algebraic space. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so, next case R2 F lower star mu P. Um, so, already this case uh, seems to have. Um, so in the current literature, not complete results. So for surfaces um, over a field, um, this was studied by Arden and Arden and Milne, in particular for K3 surfaces. Um, and more recently in so a relative situation by Bragg and Lieblich, Uh, 
Um, so, but already for, for, for I equal to two, uh, there's work to be done. And so uh, the goals of this project Well, there's a variety of goals. So one is um, we want to understand representability results for all integers. Uh, I bigger than or equal to zero. Uh, two, we want to consider uh, more general group schemes. So uh, consider uh, arbitrary Uh, finite, flat, abelian uh, group schemes. Um, and three, um, uh, we want to relax uh, the assumptions on F. Um, and maybe four, which I won't talk much about today, but uh, is, a, is a significant part of the project is to study Cartier-Giudonet theory uh, for the cohomology groups and really understand what's going on there. And maybe I should have said this at the beginning, um, throughout, uh, let me put this over here, if I, in case I forget, forget, I'll work over field K, which will be perfect. Uh, of characteristic P uh, positive. Okay. Um, right. Okay, so um, let's see how. Um, okay, so let me get just do a simple example. Um, well, aside from UP, uh, well, the next easiest group, well, you can study alpha P. So uh, what can we say about alpha P? So uh, let's say F from X to S is proper and flat. So for alpha P, uh, the story is actually much easier than uh, mu P uh, because uh, you have this sequence with the additive group. Uh, y goes to Y to the P. Um, let me call label this so I can refer to it later. I'll call that one. Um, and so you get here the cohomology of alpha p sits um, in a distinguished triangle. Uh, like this. Um, and so, um, well, that gives good, fairly good control over the cohomology of alpha p. Uh, let me just mention um, that this is given by coherent cohomology. So I'll say, I'll just say coherent complex. All right, so it's cohomology of OX. Um, and then you have this map here, which is not an OS linear map. Um, but so if you look at this, you, you see that if you want to think about what, what kind of group schemes or group spaces might you get if you take cohomology of a finite flat group scheme, well, of course you have to include uh, finite flat group schemes, but you also have to include uh, coherent sheaves uh, because they arise naturally uh, 
in this in this e example. So um, let me state the first theorem. Um, so again, uh, so let, so f from so we're over this perfect field K. So f from x to s will be a projective uh, morphism. Um, and these are finite type K schemes. Um, and let me uh, further assume that uh, S is reduced. And let me let GX be a finite flat abelian group scheme over X. Um, and the theorem is that there exists a dense open subset U and S um, such that, well, okay, so um, we're, good. we're ending up in um, some category of abelian sheaves on the FPPF side of uh, uh, U. So I'm going to consider the restriction. And so here's Ri f lower star gx. And I want to say um, that it lies in some more restrictive subcategory inside here. So let me put that there. Um, and so, um, well, I have to include finite flat abelian group schemes. Um, and I have to include uh, the abelian sheaves. So I'll, I'll say, so I'll write it this way, abelian sheaves, F PPF locally, given by vector bundles. Um, and so what do these brackets mean here? I will, well, I'll try not to write it. What I mean is you take those objects, so uh, finite, finite flat abelian group schemes over U and uh, sheaves, which are FPPF locally given by vector bundles and take the smallest abelian subcategory of the category of abelian sheaves on U. Um, and the theorem is that the cohomology you pray, you can find an, a dense open such that the cohomology lies in this, in this subcategory. Sorry, so we have a question. So uh, yes. concerning the, the, this, uh, maybe I misunderstood. So abelian shifts, FPPF, locally given by vector bundles. So by, so I believe you, you mean abelian shift on the side of uh, all uh, the schemes of finite type with the FPPF topology. But then if it is locally, then usual the same theory will give you a vector, but I mean, it seems that, what is the difference between this and the billion shield associated to vector bundles? So, so it's, I, it's, that's, it's that's a question, theory. yes. So I'm a, I, I'm a, I don't know the answer and that's why I'm being cautious and saying it this way, but I'm not specifying the, the OX module structure. Ah, there is no OX, excuse me. Excuse right, me. So, okay. right so, so, so that's why I mentioned, but yeah, so let me just elaborate a little on that point. So that's why I mentioned in this example, uh, sort of what, what we're doing, even in the cohomology of alpha P, uh, you have this, this term is given by a coherent sheaf. Uh, or uh, co coherent sheaves, but somehow we are forgetting the o OS module structure uh, because we're we're passing to just you know the maps between them are not uh, OS linear. So I'm I'm just thinking about underlying abelian sheaves. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, OK, 
Okay, shall I go on? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so here's a corollary. Um, corollary one. Uh, so this implies in particular uh, that you can find an open uh, U as above so that this is an algebraic space. Um, um, and so in particular, if you take S in the case when you start over a field, um, if S is, is this, it's just a field, um, then uh, R I F lower star G X is a finite type uh, group uh, over okay algebraic uh, uh, groups group scheme okay all right um, so further remarks so one um, I think in general here, is that right. F, Say again? F is not even F is not even flat in this in this assumption. Is that right? Uh, let's let's see. I think I want. Um, well, I, I'm assuming S is reduced, and so and I'm allowing myself to to shrink. Okay. Uh, so I could assume it to be flat uh, to start. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks. Um, so in general, um, shrinking on U seems to be necessary. So shrinking on S. Yes, uh, appears necessary. Uh, let's see. Ah, I see there's a question. Oh, uh, I see Bjorn. Yeah, uh, let's see. I think I can do that. Um, Please let me know if I put a, a link in the chat if you want to go back and forth among the slides. Please let me know if it, uh, oops, I think I sent it to the panelists, sorry. Okay, you, you can go ahead, I, I can do it. Okay, thanks. Um, all right, uh, so shrinking uh, seems necessary. And uh, two, um, I expect, but uh, so, that projective should be replaced by proper, uh, but we do use projectivity in our arguments. Um, so for now, it's that's that's a, a genuine projectivity assumption. Um, we do have some results um, which uh, don't have that. So let me say theorem two. Which is um, again, uh, let's let me assume uh, some strange things are happening there. Okay. So F from X to S is proper and smooth. One second. So that's proper and smooth. Um, and uh, here we could even assume algebraic spaces. Ah, so I'm not, I seem to have some. I'm not sure if people are joining, it's causing some confusion, but okay. Uh, finite flat uh, group scheme. I apologize. It seems that when people are joining the Jamboard, it's uh, causing some issues um, of height. 
less than or equal to one over X. Um, so if we have a height one group scheme um, and let's, so fix N, fix N and assume. Sorry, sorry we have a question. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, corollary one. So you also have maybe it's automatic and I'm not so sure. Uh, base chain compatibility. Um. Yes. Yeah, so right. So so. Um. I mean. So I guess I'll say stronger result. Sort of variant statements later, but um, let me go back here. So um. So what I mean I I guess what I'm. So if I think about a, a vector bundle, what kind of, you know, that, that has, my definition of the abelian sheaf associated to vector bundle has sort of base change built in me. So, I mean, it, 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 it's the big sheaf defined by the vector bundle and similarly for the group scheme. So, um, so I'm not sure, I, I guess it's, uh, I'm not sure how to formulate base change other than to say that it, it, it lies in this category, these sheaves that have these properties, but um, perhaps I misunderstand the question. But you could just ask about uh, base change for homology itself, like yes. our, our IF lower star GX, and you have no map, does the formation of that bring you to it? Um, so I'm always on the big side, right? So, so okay, the base okay. is automatic, yeah. yeah okay. Automatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe again about this vector boundary issue, uh, I, uh, so if a sheet is FPPF locally given by vector bundle, then it is also a, a usual technique is uh, you can have faithfully flat quasi finite, but since you're allowed to shrink, you can assume finite flat. And then you can use, uh, let us say U prime over U, and then you can do U prime over U prime over U. So you will find that your kind of mysterious sheet is inside the direct image from U prime of something which is really a vector bundle. Then it is the kernel of a double arrow. So finally, you describe it in terms of vector bundles and kernel of maps. So you don't need this given locally. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just the same as, as a billion sheaves given by vector bundles. And then you perform operations like kernels. And, yes, okay, and okay. Uh, okay, so thank you very simple. much. Yes. Okay, thank, great. Thank you. Um, also in this corollary one, it is the algebraic space of finite type automatically? Uh, yes, a finite type, yeah. Are, are you asking about the finite type part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 great, yeah. Okay, uh, so, so I'm fixing an N and let's assume that the lower cohomologies are uh, representable and flat uh, over S for I less than N. Oops. Uh, then R I F lower star G R N, sorry. is an algebraic space. So in this case, we can, we can uh, get result over the whole S, but it requires additional assumptions. So this height one condition and that the lower cohomology groups are flat, which, which is something you might expect uh, from the theory of coherent sheaves. Okay. There we go. Um, all right. Um, so let me make a few remarks. Uh, so one, um, of course, if G is a tau, um, tau um, or prime to p, prime to p. Uh, so remarks on theorem one. Um, if the group scheme is a tau prime to p, this is, uh, of course, SGA uh, four and a half. Uh, 
there. And um, if you take uh, GX to be Z mod P, um, well, here you can consider uh, Frobenius. Um, one minus F G A. And again, uh, let me label that sequence two um, because I'll use it again later. Um, and um, so in this case, again, you can get the result um, from a coherent cohomology. Um, and again, and actually Arden and Milne um, use this to uh, sort of get a similar sequence if uh, the Cartier dual of G uh, has height less than or equal to one. So um, in this case, these cases, uh, uh, one can do things with, with different techniques than the ones I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and I also just wanna mention uh, that we have uh, drawn significant technical tools and uh, inspiration from the work of Cessna Vicius um, and Schulze uh, on purity for flat cohomology, which is, just a paper filled with uh, beautiful ideas. And uh, so I just want to mention that, that that's, that plays the, 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 their work plays a significant role. And in particular, um, there's the systematic use of um, what they call animated rings. So it seems, necessary in our context, at least to work in a, in a sort of derived uh, setting, which I'll explain. Um, okay, and so the key ingredients that I'll talk about today, so it's, it's a sort of longer project, but let me, the two things I wanna emphasize is uh, one, the calculation of cohomology um, of finite flat uh, abelian group schemes of height one. Um, and two, um, and I'll have to be a little sketchy on this, but I'll explain. Um, uh, well, uh, so, some version of compactly supported uh, cohomology for, for, uh, in the flat context. So in, in the context of finite flat group schemes. So why is that necessary? Um, well, um, the reason is that uh, we want to do devisage Devisage to, uh, well, particular group schemes uh, to uh, special cases, special GX, let me put it that way. And so you have to deal with things like a degeneration. So you can have a scheme or which you have a group scheme that did, say degenerates from an alpha, from a Z mod P to an alpha P or a mu P to an alpha P. So um, how does one do debisage if you have a group, if GX is one of these uh, sort of degenerations? And the way we approach it is to try to study a sort of a compactly supported theory, um, which lets us sort of shrink and go smaller and bigger uh, to, to, to do our debisage to, to nice group schemes. So I, I hope this compactly supported theory um, may be of independent interest. Um, so I'll say a bit about that. Okay. All right. 
So let me talk about uh, the first part, cohomology of uh, finite flat uh, group schemes. All my group schemes uh, will be abelian of height less than or equal to one. Um, and let me start with the smooth case. So let's say X over K is smooth. Um, and if you look in, uh, well, SGA three, there's the reference. Um, there's an equivalence of categories Um, finite flat abelian group schemes G over X of height less or equal to one. That category is equivalent to pairs um, V rho. So since I'm in an abelian case, there's no uh, Lie algebra. Lee bracket. So V is a locally free OX module. And a rho is a semilinear map, FX upper star V uh, to V. Okay, so, um, so we can actually, so, so, uh, and and more is known. Um, so we, if we have a G, so let's so I guess by work of Hubler and also work of Arden and Milne. Um, in this case, you can calculate the cohomology um, using uh, differentials. So uh, so let's say G corresponds to a V V row. Um, and let me let epsilon be the projection to the etal topos. Um, then they, in these papers, they show that if I take the cohomology and one has to put a shift there, uh, this is given by the complex. So you take the push forward of the closed forms, uh, Z1 X over K, and then you have this nonlinear map. Uh, one is you take rho tensor one, and the other is one tensor, the Carchi operator, which goes to V tensor omega one oops, X over K. And that's a tensor there. Sorry. Okay. So let me just explain. So uh, I, this is an X here. Um, so I can include the closed forms into omega one. Um, and so that's what that this one in this coordinate is referring to. Then I have my map rho, which is a semilinear map, or I can think of it this way. And then I have the Cartier operator there. And so I can take the difference of those, and that gives a calculation of um, um, so there's a question in the chat: why assume height less than or equal to one? Um, well, that's the only situation where this uh, well, I'm um, let's see, I'm not sure I have an answer to that question, but um, I think, you, I mean, you could try to modify this, but that that's, I think to have this statement, this equivalence over here, I need to have the height less than or equal to one. Um, okay, so, so I have this way of calculating uh, the cohomology in the smooth case. And so let me just note that you can take this right side and, um, do things more generally. So uh, let me do a construction. 
which is let's start with just a perfect complex. on x and I can take a map uh, fx upper star v to v. Okay, so that's, uh, so I'm just gonna let my v be a perfect complex. Um, then I can consider um, the functor, so I can take schemes over x, and well, let me be a little bit imprecise here. I wanted to take values and complexes of abelian groups, um, which is just send y to um, well, the cohomology um, y. And then uh, let me take v tensor f y lower star. I'll take the derived functor of closed forms. And then I can take again, uh, do this row minus C procedure and end up in V and now differentials become the cotangent complex. Um, and so uh, what is this? Again, in sort of fancier terminology, this is the left con extension of, well, let me give it a number. If I call this here three, so I specified this functor on uh, smooth schemes, or in particular, like in, in the theory of the cotangent complex, polynomial ring, say over X, and you can uh, do what's called left con extension, do some simplicial resolution, um, and you get uh, this functor here. So you can derive, uh, the right side. Okay, um, and here's a theorem. Um, the theorem, let me say it in words. So, and then I'll, so let's say G is finite flat, billion height less than or equal to one on X. Um, and let's say it corresponds to V rho, uh, then um, the cohomology, and let's say we have some Y to X, not necessarily smooth, then the cohomology of Y G uh, shifted by one is uh, isomorphic to Y and and then this, uh, let me just write it again, F lower star uh, L Z one Y rho minus C B tensor L Y. So in this height less than or equal to one case, um, you can really compute the cohomology using the cotangent complex. Um, what is this saying? It's really the statement that this side is again obtained by doing this con extension business or more concretely taking simplicial resolutions uh, as in the theory of the cotangent complex. Um, let me also remark. So when you, when you take simplicial resolution of the ring, the, the point of the group scheme is defined only on your initial ring so if you cover it by something nicer you, you the group doesn't extend so it's not clear right. how to, how to yeah, do so, this procedure so that's why i'm starting so x is i'm starting with x smooth and then i'm looking at y over x so um right ah, so, okay 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 yeah, yeah okay so so this uh uh i did not uh so i should really work relative so, so I, 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 you know, I, let's say X was affine, so I have a smooth algebra, and then I can take polynomials. I can resolve uh, Y by smooth uh, algebra polynomial rings over the coordinate ring of X. Yeah, yeah. So because I need the group scheme, as you say. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, so remarks uh, for G equal to mu P, uh, this is a result I learned from Bot. Uh, I believe it's due to Bot and Lurie. Um, and I understand that it had also been observed um, independently. Independently uh, by Scholze. Okay. So let's see. I don't think I have time uh, to talk about it uh, today, but it is inter. I mean, one thing that is important for us, maybe I'll just make a few remarks, is once you describe uh, the cohomology of the group scheme by this sort of two term com well, I mean, this complex, it is very natural to start thinking about, uh, you know, the additional structure you get uh, from this representation of the cohomology. And that, that's sort of one of the key ingredients uh, that ties into our sort of study of Giudone theory uh, for, for, for the cohomology groups, um, which is sort of to use, the, this, this gives you additional structure uh, or lets you see additional structure of the cohomology. Um, maybe I'll leave it at that. Okay. So let me say a word about uh, compactly supported cohomology. Um, so um, again, we're viewing this cohomology as necessarily involving a mixture of coherent sheaves and uh, group schemes. So let me begin by mentioning uh, very briefly uh, the theory for coherent sheaves, uh, which I believe is first Deline in the appendix to residues and duality, and then Hartshorn uh, has another article uh, about this. Um, so what's the setup? So let's start with X finite type, uh, and proper over our field um, over K. Um, and we have some open U and some other Z, um, the complement. And we start with a coherent sheaf here, uh, coherent on U. Um, so then I guess what, what we should do is you choose an extension f to x of um, this uh, starting sheaf um, and then define um, the compactly supported cohomology u f u uh, to be uh, well the cocone of um, the map from the cohomology of uh, F to the cohomology uh, of the formal completion um, of X along Z, okay? Um, and then in these uh, works, uh, various nice properties uh, are discussed. Um, okay, so um, what about, so now we're interested in sort of doing a similar thing, uh, except now we have this G, let's say is a finite flat abelian group scheme um, over X. Um, and so, well, we have to, uh, this is where I won't, don't wanna go into too much detail, but this is where we have to use a bit of derived uh, geometry. Uh, what do I want to do? So first let me define, let me write HG. Uh, so we're working on a big site. So uh, 
we'll go from schemes over X to some category of complexes of abelian groups. Uh, I'll send a T over X goes to the cohomology of uh, T is FPPF cohomology uh, with coefficients in G. Um, and then uh, I can also think about the nth infinitesimal neighborhood uh, of Z in X. So I, have, I start with my Z over here. I can look at each of the neighborhoods. Um, and um, let me write I N lower star G, oops, where's that? H sub G N, this will be the functor from schemes over X up uh, um, so I want to send this to, I'll write it this way. So, so basically I want to take the derived tensor product of the rings here um, with coefficients um, in this um, group GN, the, pull, the restriction of G to ZN. So, um, there's of course an issue about how to make sense of this. And I found the exposition uh, in this paper of Cessna Vizios and Schultz to be really clear. So if anyone sort of wants more details, uh, on, I mean, there, there are other references of course too, but uh, I think that that was a really uh, nice uh, place to read. Um, and so we can look, think about this and then we can take let me write H G hat. Uh, well, now I have to, as in Deline, go to some pro category. So I'll just write whole limb uh, over N of these I N lower star H G N. So we take, that's this place is gonna play the role of this formal completion here. Okay, and so we take the limit of these uh, functors this lives in some pro category of certain sheaves. I'll write it this way just to have it written, but I don't want to emphasize it too much is this sheet sort of category of sheaves on some uh, class of animated rings in the language of, that's that says A and I in the language of uh, Cessna Vicius Schulz. Okay. And then uh, what we can then do is think about, and I'll write this, reflecting the starting X and Z. So let me write it this way. The compactly supported cohomology of G we'll write, consider as the co-cone of uh, H G of X to, um, hg hat of x. Okay, and so, um, and there's also a relative version. Um, which is if you have a morphism, let's say proper, uh, we can talk about RF lower shriek, x, z, um, g. So, uh, defined analogously. So um, I think, you know, so one can make the definition, um, but sort of one of the key results um, is that, so, so let me say it uh, sort of loosely, uh, we show that they, this has nice properties or at least as nice properties as one might hope for. Um, we show that if you do this uh, derived functor cohomology, um, it lies in a certain uh, pro category uh, generated uh, by 
I'll say perfect complexes um, and finite flat abelian group schemes. At least after shrinking in the setup I had before. So if we have a proper morphism or a projected morphism with uh, S reduced, then you can shrink on S to, to make this object lie in some category that you build out of perfect complexes and finite flat abelian group schemes. So um, it, it's a little bit awkward to say more precisely because one has to deal with the pro category and, and these kind of higher categorical, this sort of infinity category thing. So um, I don't think I wanna say it much more precisely than that, but in particular, what we show is that it has reasonable properties and it depends um, essentially only on the restriction of G to U. So that's kind of the key property. So if you go back to uh, the original, the work of Deline and Hartshorn, the first thing to ask is, well, you choose this extension here. Uh, and of course you want it to not depend on the choice of the extension. Right, and so that gives you some freedom. And so in our situation, uh, the analogous statement is that if you have a sort of G and a G prime, which are isomorphic over U uh, by some map over X, then in fact, uh, this sort of compactly comolo uh, supported cohomology doesn't, is the same. Um, and so it, it, it's sort of an al analogous statement of, to this uh, extension property. Oops. Okay, so that's uh, what I wanna say about that. Um, let me just conclude um, with uh, sort of- is, is it in fact factorial in you or, or that's not cool. You said something seems to be weaker than that. It's a little bit weaker um, because um, you see, I mean, one problem we deal with is um, that we have to sort of work around is over here, um, you can always choose uh, this extension just by general properties of coherent sheaves. But in our situation, if I, if I just give you a finite flat group scheme over U, it's not so clear how to extend it always to any X. You, you can do some alteration or something like that to extend. But um, so I, we have to do something, we do something a little bit weaker, namely here, I, I really start with the G over X. Um, and then, but, and that's enough for sort of the applications we have in mind, but um, yeah, so there's more work to develop uh, this theory. I mean, we, but, but in our setup, we start with the G over X um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that. I mean, that's also why I sort of make it part of the notation here. Uh, in the end, uh, uh, it, it would be good to develop that theory better, I think, but yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so let me, uh, I think I have five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so let me just uh, say sort of, again, actually related to that question, um, which is uh, some of the, aspects are a little still a bit clumsy and so uh, I mean what what we don't have and so I'll say towards uh, some kind of dbctf right so I mean what what we're sort of moving around is that well we have to shrink because we only can say good properties over some open um, and uh, so on um, and so I think that to me is reminiscent of sort of the problems when you, you know, talk about Lee sheaves and so on. So, um, so what can we say sort of at a, at a derived category level? So um, let me say, um, so if I have a scheme, let's say a finite type over K, um, what sort of the, uh, um, the categories we can think about. Well, um, again, inside here, there's, I can write 
let me write this, dfx. Um, let me again use sort of brackets. So what I mean is you have to take the triangul thick uh, triangulated subcategory generated by certain objects. And so uh, the objects I want to consider here are I lower star in the notation before you start with uh, G on some closed subscheme. So we want to throw in, you know, push forwards in this derived sense of finite flat group schemes on closed subschemes. And uh, also the sheaves defined by perfect complexes. And uh, Let me write here D and I'm, I'm concerned that maybe I'm saying something redundant, but I guess that would be good. So here again, I'll worry about this uh, local, just I, I wanna put locally um, uh, perfect. So maybe this is, uh, So in other words, I, I just, I, I want to only assume complexes of abelian sheaves which are locally given by perfect complexes. Maybe this is uh, redundant. So, uh, but anyway, so let, let me uh, still do that to be careful. And then um, what's the theorem that we actually prove? Um, so um, let's start. If I have F from X to S uh, as in theorem one, so projective um, S reduced, um, then for F in this D F of X, um, there exists dense open U in S such that um, if I take this RF lower star, F restricted to U, this lies in D LF of U. So it's not quite a stability property of the of sort of like D, B, C, T, F, but it's, it's uh, the best we can do at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any questions? So, so I have several questions, but uh, I don't know where to begin. Maybe um, the mu p is um, related to omega one log. So uh, a height at most one. So if you take mu p n, then of course it's related to uh, w n omega one log. And uh, so there is this uh, whole theory of uh, uh, logarithmic uh, uh, the sheaves. And uh, so it should, should enter there some place. Um, so uh, this uh, construction you, you, you mentioned, this equivalence of category should be, should have some, uh, some variant of a higher level, uh, I think. Uh, and uh, so, in the of course, if you uh, um, uh, it can extend, uh, like uh, it is fashionable to say today, then uh, you can also replace the one bit by uh, derive the one bit, and uh, you can uh, you can construct you can perform some construction. But I don't know how what, if you have looked into that. In, uh, what, what you give. So that's my first question. The second thing is. Um, an observation that I think uh, what you are looking for at the end in the in section four, uh, already you can find some um, sort of uh, first uh, first idea of this question in um, uh, this expose by uh, uh, Grothendieck on Christian cohomology, uh, note by Coates and Drusilla. So he looks for such a, a category of uh, including the, the vector boundaries, the finite flat groups. 
and ah. maybe also including also agrarian schemes maybe because you see here you have the, the BTs which are kernel so then it's they, they should come also so what kind of complexes uh, do you get and I think the motivation for botanic was to find suitable categories stable under some some well, suitable duality so mm -hmm. what kind of a duality theorem can you can you get in the so probably this question, long-term project. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. I, I well, first of all, thank you for that. I, I guess regarding the first question, I, if I understand correctly, and and this is something uh, Bargov has also uh, mentioned to me. I think if we want to talk about new p to the n or something like that, uh, that then we should be looking at the Rambit. Uh, and I think there should be a generalization that we haven't worked it out. So it's, it's definitely. Uh, um, or maybe um, F gauges, F gauges, right? In the sense of Fontaine uh, Jensen, maybe. Uh, <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I, yes. So, so you mean, so to go from uh, what goes here? Yes, this gets yeah. really into sort of right. Butonet theory proper, I think. Um, um, but but I would expect, I mean, I'm hopeful that the, that, that should be possible, but we just haven't done it. Um, but that's right. And then here now, uh, let's see, I'm not, um, I'd have to think more about whether the logarithmic sheaves uh, enter in. I mean, here, I guess for mu p, I guess the only logarithm I see is to, you, the way you get this isomorphic, Spism is by taking d log from the Coomer sequence, uh, and then um, that sort of connects the two. Um, but okay, I, I don't have anything intelligent to say about that, so maybe I'll uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think more about it. Thank you. And for the second question, so I haven't looked at that, but uh, I guess I so we don't have any right now. We don't know about duality. Um, I'm not sure I see where the abelian schemes enter in. Um, just because of the finite uh, Francoise schemes are sometimes a resolution by uh, abelian schemes. So it's, uh, it's nice to ah. consider excess of abelian schemes. And uh, for example, yes, in okay. the, uh, the older stuff under Bertolo uh, Green Messing, then uh, this, this was important uh, to, to look first. Uh, so you, you, you consider abelian schemes and then you, you get the finite Francoise. Right. So, so yeah, so that's a little bit of a different direction, actually. Um, so one thing that confused us for a very long time is we were trying to do exactly working with resolutions like this to get um, uh, to understand the cohomology, and it seemed difficult for us in general. But if if you know if you have some uh, arbitrary finite flat abelian group scheme over some scheme X. Uh, so maybe we just missed uh, uh, something, but the, we, we, we kind of got stuck trying to work with resolutions uh, in, in that setting. So, um, um, I mean, I, I, I think maybe another way to say what, what our concern was, like if you think about GM and you think about the cohomology of GM, um, like, like R2 F lower star, um, anything about the formal Brouwer group, I think it's possible to make examples where the order of an element grows as you go up nilpotent thickenings. And so that uh, is something we want to avoid uh, because that's going to imply non-representability uh, if you sort of keep, um, so, so for us, it's quite important to fix uh, in, in the study of P, mu P say, uh, to not let the, do mu P to the end and sort of let n grow. Um, I'm not sure if that, so, so I'll have to, uh, I haven't looked at, I'll, I'll, I, I'll look at the reference, but um, uh, yeah, there's much work in that area. I don't have much, much to, to add. Uh, Thank you. Uh, further questions? So you mentioned that for duals of uh, high to one groups, there is a similar description of cohomology. So is it, uh, uh, I don't remember. Uh, so, uh, 
So this should generalize the case of Z mod P. Uh, so this works for duals of, of flat height one groups on X. Is it, what is the remark on duals that you made? Oh, I, okay, so let's see if I can remember. So, I mean, so you start with, um, let's see. So basically you start with, you, you want to take a uh, harm Let's see, so you have, uh, you take GM, you take D log, uh, which goes to F lower star Z1 X, and then you take one minus C to omega one X. Uh, and then here you have GM, your multiplication by P, um, so I think, Let's see, you do this and you then take harm from the Cartier dual of your group scheme into this, ah. in, in mapping into this sequence. And then uh, let's see, I hope I'm, this is in this paper of Art and, and Milne, for example, and Hubler. And so if you take this, if you do this, then here you get G and G and then you get, then you analyze this and see that you really get the Lie algebra tensor, this F lower star Z1 and uh, the tensor uh, omega one here. Um, ah, so you get a similar complex that allows you to get the comb. Yes, and so, and so then you can, and then they check that that gives you a sort of a, a sequence with the G now and G and uh, something like, um, let's see, I hope I'm not, uh, I, I may be messing so this up, but, but also you need. Okay, yeah, so, so you so this means exact. Uh, so it, okay. it's in this uh, there. So I, I probably didn't say it correctly, but uh, it's something like that that you use the the sequence for G for GM and then you harm into it with the Cartier dual to understand the the G. Okay. So this is in this old paper, probably in the seventies or. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think it's duality in the flat cohomology of curves, I believe it's the paper. Any final questions? Could you go back to theorem one just for a moment? Right. So, so uh, this theorem is, is described in terms of RIF lower star, which is good for old fashioned people like me. Maybe not so good for a young hot shot like Luke either Z. And I'm wondering if, uh, <laughs> if, if maybe if maybe there's a there's a way to reformulate it <laughs> using using the uh, the language of n stacks that you described in, in a talk you gave here uh, at Berkeley a while ago. And I understood I think I understood your talk for a little while. Um, <laughs> Would that be a, 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 suitable, a suitable language here for, for this? For this? Well, uh, I, I think that's, so first of all, well, thanks for asking that. Uh, I think, so I think the reformulation of this here uh, mm -hmm. is what I was doing at the end. Um, right, um, that's right. Um, let me just pull it up here, uh, yeah. right? So it's this stability property. Now yeah. this theorem two that I mentioned is I think the one you're referring to, um, so there's a different argument in this case uh, where, so, I mean, this, the proof of theorem two here is a little bit different. I mean, what one can show, what we show is that this, if you just take the derived cohomology, RF lower star GX yeah. as, as some kind of complex, uh, that that actually gives some kind of notion of algebraic N stack or geometric N stack in the language of Simpson. Um, and so, uh, sort of the whole complex, like if you have a, you know, the cohomology of a perfect complex uh, is better behaved than the sort of individual cohomology group. Exactly, so, yeah. so that's the reflection here that it, it's some kind of a nice uh, higher stack or that a nice complex. And then you have sort of special things you have to deal with to pass to individual cohomology groups. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the idea there. So there's a stronger statement than theorem two. Um, Thank you. Okay, thank you.